is super fb here back in another video and before we start with this one remember to subscribe and use this channel like the video if you do end up liking it let's get on into it so today's video is going to be about starting off in the world of fpv in the year of 2021 with a budget of under 500 dollars now that is a sort of restraining budget a restricted budget but it is a very very doable budget and one that we're going to be working on with uh, today's video. So uh, with that $500, we're going to be splitting it up into four categories. The transmitter, the goggles, the quad, and a few batteries. Those are the four main things that you actually kind of need in order to get up and running in the world of FPV and actually have start having a good time. So the quad budget, we're going to be sticking with $150. Bucks. The transmitter budget, we're going to be sticking at around $100. Bucks. The FPV goggles at about $200. Bucks and a couple of batteries for about 50 bucks and whatever else you can spare on top of the 500 buck budget so throughout today's video i'm going to be referencing a lot of used equipment i know some people are not really comfortable with going out and buying used equipment because you don't know how it was handled or anything throughout the life span of the thing i'm here to tell you that i'm going to be talking a lot about used equipment because that's the best way you can get uh the most out of your money and in fpv you kind of want to get the most out of your money because a lot of your money kind of gets flown up in the air at like 200 feet and drop down and broken so you kind of want to get the best equipment that you can get for your money uh, that you know probably won't break because it's on on land and not up in the sky but let's get started so right here i have a controller in front of me this is the thing obviously if you if you know anything about fpv this is the thing that controls the quad and makes it fly and do all sorts of flips and maneuvers this is the tyrannus qx7 s it is the S because it has the hall sensor gimbals and the cool looking stick ends under there. Now I got this at the used marketplace, the FPV marketplace on Facebook. That's my number one go to stop. I'll put links to all the used places that I uh, that I normally use to contact people and get good deals and stuff. But I got this there for 90 bucks. Now this thing normally goes for about 150 bucks and above all the time and on banggood.com i have seen it go as low as 110 bucks but no lower this is 90 bucks used and that's a great deal that is a spectacular deal i bought this for my little brother he has been using my controller which i bought as a qx7 just a couple months ago like about six or seven months ago when i actually started fpv i bought that for about 100 bucks now that did not come with the hall sensor gimbals or the extra stick ends or anything that was bare bones a QX7. Now this is an even better deal. Goes to show that if you know what you're looking for, you can get good deals out there. Now if you wanna go out and buy a brand new controller, you can get the FlySky FSI6X. That goes for about 56 bucks, but then you're kinda of locked into the FlySky ecosystem. Or you can go with the Betaflight, uh, I believe it's called the Light Radio, Betaflight, uh, Beta FPV Light Radio. I believe that's what it's called. I'll put a link in the description and a photo up right now. That goes for about 40 bucks. Now that is a very limited controller. There's not that many toggles, switches, or anything. They're not, there's not that much customization, but it'll get you up in the air for 40 bucks if you really want to buy a brand new, and that can be bound with FR Sky stuff. FR Sky is kind of what I recommend. Uh, just flat out, I like FR Sky. Their XM receivers are really good, really strong. The antenna that it comes with natural or standard is great. Overall, I recommend FR Sky. For under 100 bucks brand new, those are the two only things. Fly Sky FSI 6X and the Beta FPV Light Radio. Those are the two main things that I would recommend under 100 bucks brand new. But in the world of used hardware, there's so many options out there if you want. You can get an X9D for about 110 bucks, 120 bucks sometimes if you want to stretch your budget. I got this QX7S for 90 bucks. You can get a QX7 normally from probably like 80 bucks or something. You just have to go out and, and uh, hunt for great equipment. For our budgetary constraints and for today's video, this is a QX7S that I bought recently for 90 bucks. So that shaves 10 bucks off of our allocated budget of 100 bucks. Let's move on. So next up are goggles. These are my Fat Shark HD3s. You guys have seen these before. Yada, yada, yada. Let's move on. So goggles goggles are very important these are the gateway to fpv this is what you see the quality of your goggles are very important and fat shark seems to have that quality locked down my last video was all about fat shark goggles and choosing the right one our budget is 200 bucks for a great pair of goggles and i feel like i've got it right here usually i have rapid fire attached to it but i actually bought Clearview and world and slapped it onto here because i upgrade to hdo2s that's i, I digress Let's talk more about 
the goggles itself. These are HD3s. You can get anything ranging from HD2s, HD3s, uh, Dominator V1s, Dominator V2s. You can go and get Sky Zone O2Xs. You can get various goggles for about 200 bucks in the used marketplace. In the used marketplace, there's goggles everywhere. In, in the Facebook marketplace or the Facebook FPV marketplace group, there are listings daily for goggles under 200 bucks. It's everywhere, okay? These goggles I bought with rapid fire for about 250 bucks about five months ago. Now you can get the shell, just the shell, just the HD3s without the module for about 150 bucks. This module that I have on here is the Clearview module by Eashin, the Pro 58 or whatever it's called. And I bought a little housing for it. I got the module used again for about $28 and these this housing on the outside to make it look a little cleaner for about 10 bucks. That puts it well under our $200 budget. If we were to go out and buy a pair of HD3s with Clearview, it would be about $188, $198 right on the money uh, on our budget. So that's great. Now, if you were to buy, go out there and buy brand new goggles, I really would only recommend two main uh, pair of goggles, if, but they're both box goggles. I can't really seem to find any solid goggle goggles, like actual goggles with two little uh, camera uh, lenses, or no, sorry, two little displays inside and everything. I can't seem to find any great pair of goggles under 200 bucks that I would actually recommend. For about 200 bucks, I'd recommend getting a pair of box goggles, like a solid pair of box goggles. Fat Shark makes a great pair of go uh, uh, box goggles, the Fat Shark Scout. Uh, it has a great receiver built in. It's got DVR and everything in there. Fat Shark's just killing it. You know, Fat Shark's just awesome. Awesome. The used market is where it's at. You can get a great deal for used goggles on any marketplace, whether it be just normal Facebook marketplace, the Facebook group FPV marketplace, RC groups on, the, on like the internet, Craigslist, OfferUp, anywhere. You can find great deals on goggles. Fitting a great pair of goggles under the $200 umbrella is very easy. Now, I would suggest if you're getting HD3s to look for about like that $150 mark for just the shell and then get like a clear view module on there. HD2s, about the same. HD2s are kind of hard to get uh, nowadays, but you can probably get it about the same price as HD3s, maybe less, maybe more. It's kind of, it kind of depends on how good you are at haggling and finding good deals. Uh, the same goes with Dominator V3s and V2s as well, and Attitudes as well. If you get Fat Shark Attitudes, just like I talked about in my last video, you don't need to buy a module. It comes pre-built in. If you're getting Sky Zones, Sky Zones are wonderful. If you get like Sky Zone O2Xs or O3Xs, those are awesome pairs of goggles. You don't need to get this little module or anything. And if you can save a couple bucks in the other categories, then you can get a better pair of goggles as well. Uh, now, if you're going brand new again, I would only really suggest just two things, uh, two pairs of goggles, the Eoshin EV8 uh, 800D and the Fat Chart Scout goggles. They both have built-in diversity and they both have DVR and they're great. They got a decent built-in receiver and uh, and everything like that. Yeah, that's it for goggles. Really, you just got to find a good uh, good good deal. But for the sake of this video, to wrap it uh, to wrap it up in this uh, goggle category, I have a pair of HD3s with Fat Shark. Or not sorry, with uh, Eoshin Pro 58 Clearview module on the side, totaling at about 200 bucks, right on the money if you if you give or take or you like my estimation. So the next thing, the third thing in our FPV $500 adventure, and the thing that we have allocated $150 for is our FPV quad. $150 is a solid budget for your first FPV quad. I would not suggest, contrary to my last few items that I've talked about, I would not suggest getting a used quad because you don't know how hard they've been flown, what things have been you know, burnt out or blown out. You don't know how solid the solder joints are or anything. You could go out and buy a brand new quad if you want, but I also have suggested previously that you build your own quad. And if you were to build your own quad, and for the sake of this video, I have allocated 150 bucks for my personal FPV budget build that I have talked about previously and made a whole video on. If you want to click on that video and watch the video about this specific quad I have in front of me, it's up here, somewhere right here. You can click on that and watch the uh, the parts breakdown on this specific quad. Yeah, for this specific video, I'm talking about this specific quad. I've said specific a million times, but this is the $150 budget build that I made recently, and that's my recommendation for 
our $500 budget. Now that's if you want to fly five inch. If you want to fly three inch, there's a lot of other options out there. Three inches are slightly less expensive at times. <laughs> Certain things can make it a little bit more expensive, but three inches uh, as a general rule of thumb can be a slightly less expensive uh, and, or slightly more. Cinewhoops, easy to fit under 150 bucks. If you want, uh, let's say mini, mini whoops, like, you know, indoor house kind of small little racers. Those are pretty easy to fit in as well. What's not easy to fit in is about like those big seven inches that I have, like that I've, I made a build, a, a build video on a seven inch before too, but seven inches, those are relatively expensive. Now, contrary to previous opinion that I've stated about buying used hardware, I would not suggest buying used hardware for your FPV quad. I, I just would not suggest buying a used FPV quad. You don't know how hard it's been flown, if things have been blown out, or you know, you just don't know the amount of damage that it's taken up. So I would suggest either you build a quad from the ground up, or you have someone else build it for you, or you buy it pre-built for about 150 bucks. But my recommendation for this video is this, my budget build, of 150 bucks bada boom bada bam the link is up here if you want to watch the parts breakdown for this specific quad moving on so moving on up into our last category our batteries fpv batteries are expensive they can be very expensive but they have gone down in price significantly throughout the years as i have looked into trends and right now, a 1300 milliamp hour 4S is about 15 bucks. A 1500 milliamp hour 4S is about 17 to 18 bucks. And a 1200 milliamp hour 6S is about $22, sometimes 20 bucks. I recommend CNHL as a brand. And my battery of choice is this one, the 1500 milliamp hour CNHL Black at about 18, 17 to 18 bucks a battery pack. And that's actually a decent price, not gonna lie. It's a decent price for batteries. And in our budget, we have allocated 50 bucks for batteries, plus anything that we've saved. And at 17 to 18 bucks a piece, we can get about three packs of these 4S batteries. Now, if you're gonna go balls to the walls and actually start off with 6S, you can only get about two packs of these if you want, are restricted by our $50 budget. It's kind of sad. And now if you have a $60 budget, you can get about four of these at $15 a piece, still about three of these and about three of these now. Batteries are expensive. Batteries are definitely expensive. And for today's video, I'm gonna say at our $50 budget, plus whatever we save, I think we saved about 10 bucks with that controller. That 60 bucks, I would say get about four of these, four 1300 milliamp hour batteries at CNHL Black 4S's because you get four batteries versus just three of these and three of these at 60 bucks. You get more flight time <laughs> out of getting that extra battery right here with their 1300 milliamp hour 4S battery at 15 bucks a piece. That's just math guys. <laughs> That's just how it works. Batteries are expensive. Again, I reiterate batteries are expensive. Whatever money that you have left over, try to put into batteries because that's how you have more fun. More batteries equal more fun. More batteries equal more flight time. And that's about it. So any and all things that I have talked about, I will have listed in the description for you guys to click on and purchase if you want. None of them are affiliated. So no, I really don't get any cash out of it. So just, just click on and buy it if you want. Definitely check out the used market for things. For LiPo batteries, I would su also suggest not going to the used market for these things because people will kind of run these batteries to the ground most of the time. If you're not careful, these LiPo batteries can explode. So I, <laughs> I would just get brand new batteries. And that's why I talked about really only brand new batteries and stuff. But there, there are lots of other things that you could buy in this $500 umbrella. But these are the things that I would suggest getting under that $500 umbrella uh, price budget. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. If you guys have any suggestions for things that people should buy in, uh, in, in, in FPV, please do comment down below for everyone to see. I'll pin some of them. Uh, I'll, I'll like the, the best one that I see at the moment. I'll just pin it to the top and that'll be my uh, extra recommendations. And yeah, that's about it. So thank you so much for watching. Remember to like the video, comment and subscribe if you're new to this channel and I will see you in the next one.